to the Twin Trade Towers. Let's go to James Kallstrom, Tom, if we could, the former director of the FBI here in New York. Mr. Kallstrom, uh, I'm sure you've never seen anything like this. Do you have any information that might be helpful to us? Well, not particular information on this tragedy, but uh, certainly what an incredible tragedy. And, uh, you know, all of us in law enforcement and prior in law enforcement have, have talked for years and the public has seen the hatred in the world. They've seen the bombing of the World Trade Center. They saw the conspiracy uh, to blow up the tunnels in the uh, United Nations and the FBI building back in the 90s. They've seen the, the bomb at the USS Cole and the, and the bombings of our embassies in Africa. So, I mean, we've known for some time now that this hatred exists. And uh, and uh, now it looks like uh, that it's uh, culminated in this absolutely horrendous, incredible act uh, against the United States. Jim, as someone uh, who's, Washington who's, today. I'm sorry, as someone who's investigated some of these crimes in the past, and when we think back to 1993 and the World Trade Center bombing and what it took in terms of coordination and planning to pull off that one bomb in the World Trade Center, can you even speculate as to what it might take to coordinate this, what we think so far is a three-pronged attack this morning? Uh, Matt, it, it, it obviously took a lot of coordination. Uh, there's a lot of groups in the world that, uh, that have the ability to coordinate these types of attacks. Uh, as you know, and most people should know, uh, the United States is an open society. I mean, we've talked for years about the, uh, the downside of having our borders basically open. Uh, and any given day, people fly into our, our airports uh, undocumented and turned into the, uh, into the population. They're not certainly all terrorism. But they're not terrorists, but I mean, we live in a free society, and I'm not espousing we change right. that, right. but it's very, very difficult uh, for the FBI and law enforcement to keep track of this when we live in the society that we live in. Jim, if you can stand by for just a moment, because Jim McLeshevsky at the Pentagon has some more information for us. Mick? Uh, Katie, uh, my colleague Chris Brown here at the Pentagon uh, encountered some of those who survived uh, whatever it was, whether it was a bomb or an airplane crashing into the Pentagon. Uh, th one of the survivors who uh, was reportedly injured, had various lacerations, uh, was on the uh, second floor uh, of the D-ring. That is uh, one ring inside the outer ring of the Pentagon when suddenly there was this horrific blast uh, and he said that the second floor buckled upward and then the third floor above him actually collapsed downward. Uh, the scene on the other side of the building as it's being described to us, uh, there are people being removed on stretchers, security forces are evacuating the building right now and, uh, and according to the officials uh, uh, here at the Pentagon, uh, they still don't know exactly what it was, but as you reported, Katie, eyewitnesses reported that in fact it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon. And Mick, any idea, I, I, I wasn't quite sure if you said this, about the number of people who might have been hurt or worse in this? No idea at all, Katie. As you know, having worked here on any given day, this is a small city, 25 to 30,000 people may be working here at any one time. Uh, that portion of the Pentagon, by the way, uh, had just been remodeled and just reopened. Uh, if the crash had occurred just a few months ago, uh, that section of the Pentagon would have been uh, virtually empty. Uh, but at this time of day, uh, early morning uh, or mid-morning, the Pentagon's very busy. Uh, it's impossible to say uh, how, many, uh, uh, how many casualties there may be. Uh, but uh, there have been uh, a, a, a large number of people cited being removed on stretchers. Uh, and again, uh, the, uh, as, as one uh, uh, survivor said, uh, the floor just buckled up under him and, and, and the roof caved in on him. All right, Mick, thank you very much. We want to move a couple of miles away from you right now to the White House where Bob Kerr is standing by. And Bob, we understand that building has now been evacuated. Matt, that's true. It is uh, utterly surreal. Uh, as soon as word came of the Pentagon incident, uh, we were rather forcefully removed from the White House. The scene was one of uh, administrators, uh, crooks, whatever, running at fairly high speed all the way out of the building through the top gates. Then we huddled for a while in um, Lafayette Park across the street and we've been moved now from there uh, a, a block or so away. Uh, the, uh, the offices along Jackson Place, which uh, uh, are across the street from the White House and adjacent to Lafayette Park, also have been evacuated. And in the most surreal of this morning's scenes here at the White House, a white plane, a very big jet, 
was flying an unusual pattern uh, near the White House over Lafayette Park very slowly. It made one circle, and then uh, we have not seen it since. Uh, there was a lot of concern about what that plane might be, uh, but again, it's only speculation, but m most people say that since uh, flights have been cleared from U.S. airspace and it was a totally white plane, looked unusual to all of us, that it was a government plane of some kind. We should point out that we're looking at pictures, Bob, as you speak, of the World Trade Center because all of the camera crews have been evacuated from the White House as well. When do you expect President Bush to arrive there, Bob? Well, Katie, he's coming back uh, directly, and you figure it's about a two-hour flight, so uh, you, you can do the math. I, the reason I said that it was so surreal was that within a, just about 20 minutes ago, they were still conducting tours. You had hordes of uh, tourists and others still in the White House on tour, lining up outside to get in. There seemed to be absolutely no unusual activity outside the White House until word came of the incident at the Pentagon. So it's been quite a dramatic shift here. You know, in terms of responsibility, Tom and, and Matt and Bob, apparently a senior official from the Radical Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine denied on Tuesday, the group had any connection to the plane crash. An anonymous caller had told uh, television that it was behind the crash, but, quote, I emphasize that the story released on television by an anonymous person is totally incorrect. Tassir Khaled, a senior official from the DFLP Politburo in the Palestinian territories, told Reuters. The DFLP is against hijacking planes and against endangering the lives of civilians who are not connected with the struggle of this region, he said. There are going to be a lot of claims and counterclaims in, uh, in the course of the next 24 hours or so. This is a, uh, a task for investigators of extraordinary magnitude to try to determine who did this and how they got away with it. You think about an American Airlines flight that was on its way from Boston to Los Angeles, was hijacked in midair. They're now citing transmissions from the plane, so they have hard evidence of that, and then brought down here and made to fly into the Twin Trade Towers. Did one of the hijackers get control? Did they shoot the pilot? It's, uh, it, it boggles the mind beyond our ability to and figure out what was going on. You talk Early. about transmissions. I was just curious. Have you had any evidence of what was said during the They're just saying they're citing transmission to know that the plane had been hijacked. That's all that they're saying about it at this point. We also ought to remind everyone once again, this is an exceptional development. The FAA has banned all takeoffs at all airports across America. This country in terms of air travel has been immobilized. A good portion of the nation's capital, the most powerful center in the world, has been immobilized as well as a result of these terrorists. And that's attacks. a very haunting description that Bob Kerr just gave of that low-flying aircraft near the White House, and one can only wonder if that was something that ultimately Let's ended back. up in the Pentagon. Can we just saw a live picture of what seemed to be a portion of the building falling away from the World Trade Center. If we can re-rack that to about 20 seconds ago, you'll see something dramatic happening, and I don't know whether it's another explosion or a portion of the building falling away, but something major just happened at that building. Here we go Here to we the, have tape. the tape. And watch what happens in the left-hand tower. I don't know if this is the correct tape. There, something there is about no. to happen, falling away right there. Yeah, it looks like a big chunk of it has just peeled away. One can only hope that the area has been evacuated, but of course you wonder about all the emergency vehicles and the people who might have been injured early in the morning. Well, you remember when the bomb went off in the basement of it in 1993, how much damage was done throughout that building, how much chaos there was at that time. These are two coordinated airplane attacks on the building on the upper reaches of it. That will have an enormous structural effect. Those buildings, I think that it's fair to say, uh, will probably have to be brought down. Uh, it's too early to speculate on that, but there's been that kind of damage. Let, let's talk again. You were talking about we the, have somebody actually this is a reporter the here in, in yep. New York from WNBC. You talk about the fact this plane was taken from Boston on the way to, to Los Angeles. The reports are that it was being diverted to JFK. And just for people who aren't familiar with the geography of this area, the southern tip of Manhattan would be very much near the flight the landing pattern for JFK Airport. It could have been easy for a hijacker to pretend 
that he was taking that plane to JFK and veer off at the last minute. Yeah, I heard one eyewitness say that over Washington Square, which is in the lower reaches of Manhattan, he saw a plane go over at about a thousand feet, apparently the American Airlines flight, and then do what he described as a sharp right turn right toward the World Trade Center. He then lost sight of it. And one eyewitness here in this AP report says he was getting off a PATH train to the World Trade Center and saw bodies falling out of the building. As he approached it, police told him to get out of the building immediately. He ran outside and watched people jump out of the first building. And then there was a second explosion. This, this footage we're seeing right now shows that, that the damage is so severe. I mean, we had seen what seemed to be two fairly self-contained impact craters before, and now it appears something much more dramatic has happened to at least one of those towers. These pictures are beyond belief. We have a report that the second plane may have flown out of Newark, New Jersey. This is an official who was speaking uh, on the condition of anonymity. Again, there is no confirmation of that. We just know that there were two planes that went in. The first one apparently was an American Airlines flight that was from Boston to Los Angeles. We're now seeing it from the harbor view of this uh, continuing uh, damage and destruction to the World Trade Center. Incidentally, Tom, I just want to interrupt you for two seconds because apparently Jamie Gangel has some more information for us. Jamie? spoken again to U.S. officials with access to uh, the highest intelligence, and they are now confirming that it does appear that at the Pentagon it was a plane. Again, they are saying they believe now a third plane was involved at the Pentagon. And, and of course, this has been the nightmare, Katie, for uh, national security officials for a long time. We talk about nuclear bombs and those kinds of exchanges or invasions, but Everyone has been terribly worried about the suitcase-sized uh, bomb of some kind or an airplane or an attack on our subways in the large cities. And this, obviously, no one had anticipated. Three airplanes that were deliberately aimed at critical targets in America. We can only hope that it's open for over for today, but of officials are taking no chances on all that. They're evacuating all critical buildings because as uh, Mr. Johnson said earlier, this is an open society. James Colstrom from the FBI also pointing out that almost anyone can come in here. They have access to so many instruments that can be used as instruments of attack and terrorism, and that certainly has been the case today. Let's go to our State Department correspondent, Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, what can you tell us? Well, this from the FBI. The State Department has been evacuated. There was a meeting going on in the Operations Center. Other top officials were in the Situation Room at the White House. Colin Powell is in Bogota, Colombia, on a two-day trip. But this very interesting information, Katie, Matt, and Tom, from the FBI, they had been operating a massive uh, exercise from their hostage rescue unit. All of their top teams, about 50 personnel, helicopters, equipment, were in Monterey, California for the last two days, scheduled to fly back today commercially. So all of those people are out of place. It's fair to say, according to uh, sources that we've talked to here at NBC, that the FBI uh, rescue operations and other FBI operations are really in chaos right now because they can't reach their officials in New York. All of their phone lines are down. And now you've got all of their special experts on this stuck in Monterey, California, trying to get a military flight back because there are no longer commercial flights. So they are seriously out of pocket, and there is a real breakdown of the FBI anti-terror coordination team, which is, of course, the principal team that would lead any effort and was so effective under Jim Kallstrom in New York City during the World Trade Center bomber, bombing and the TWA explosion, which, of course, turned out not to be terror. Andrea, is the State Department taking this uh, claim of responsibility from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine seriously? Are they giving any credence to that or are they dismissing it or how do they feel about who might have been responsible for this? I think it is far too early for them, even the best experts in the government, to figure this out. They have one instant reaction, as you know, and it uh, could be wrong, but their immediate reaction in a case like this would be to look toward Osama bin Laden and the collateral groups connected to him, simply because he has proved with the embassy bombings in Africa that he is the one ter terror leader who is capable of this kind of highly coordinated attack. The bombings went
went off in Tanzania and in Kenya almost simultaneously. It was extraordinarily well coordinated. They uh, proved their case to a jury effectively and have managed to, to develop a great deal of information from sources from, in fact, turning some former members of his network. Andrea. So they believe, Tom, that he is the most likely person, but it's far too early to say anything. We want yes, to uh, tell you that American Airlines has confirmed that one of its flights, American Airlines flight number 11,